I cut the pins for the true dovetail at the back of the drawers. Then I cut all the dados for the bottoms of the drawers. I used two pieces of wood to measure the interior dimension of the bottom drawers. Now that all the pieces of the drawers are done, I can sand the interiors. Then I put glue on the dovetails and I assemble the drawers. After the glue is dry, I plank the protruding pins and tails of all the drawers. I check that all the drawers fit inside the cabinet. When they all fit in their place, I sand all the exteriors. I clean the bottoms and the top of the drawers with an end plane. I measure the space needed for the drawers and I adjust the eight. I cut a wedge shaped piece of wood for the interior of the cabinet. I end plane a flat spot. Oops! Uh, now I need to make another one. After planning the second one, I cut both of them and installed them in the back of the cabinet to prevent the drawers from catching on the side. I cut some runners to support the drawers. I drill a chamfer hole on both ends of the runners. I screw them on top of the drawers using two layers of masking tape as spacers. I made a compartment on the right side where I put my actual runner switch. Now I can start on the two big bottom drawers. After cutting all the pieces, I make all the dovetails. For those drawers, I'm making true dovetails. Like the smaller drawers, I cut a dado for the bottom and then I cut them. I send the interiors of the two drawers. I put glue on the pins and tails and I assemble the drawer. This is the first one drying. Now I can work on the second one. There's a dent on one side of the cabinet. Nothing surprising here. You can scratch pine just by looking at it. I try something new. I wet the wood and a rag and I put a smoothing iron on top of the rag. After all the water has evaporated, the wood is swollen and the dent is less noticeable. I sand all the exterior surfaces of the cabinet. For the profile on the raised panel, I send them by end. I hate sanding pine. The sandpaper always gets gummed up. I also sand the side of the plywood. It's time to finish the big drawers. I plane the pins and tails that are sticking out and I sand the exterior. I install the drawer slides on the drawer itself and inside the cabinet. I just need to put both slides together and try them. I cut the false fronts for the bottom drawers 
and I planed them so they will fit perfectly. I end plane the front of the drawer straight on both sides and I send that. Yeah, I want to make some trapeze shaped legs. To cut compound angles, I need to clean up my radial saw. I bought this saw as a Christmas present for my father 27 years ago. It has a digital readout and the elevation is motorized. After adjusting the angle, I cut 16 pieces on the left side. I moved the arm to the other side at 11 and a half degrees and I cut all the right sides. I installed my dado set in my table saw and I tilt the blade at 11 and a half degrees. I cut a rabbit on the top and bottom of all the pieces. I also cut some squares for the top and bottom of the legs. On the bottom squares, I drill a hole for the legs leveler. I glue all the pieces of the legs and I insert some headless nails to hold everything together. When the glue is dry, I send the four legs. Now I need a door. I cut four pieces of maple at 45 degrees. I cut a groove in the center of each of them to fix a plexiglass plate inside. Now I need to cut it to the dimensions of the door. I clean the plexiglass. I notice that scratches don't disappear with water. I put glue on the end of the frame and I put the plexiglass inside. I use two of my wooden squares to put pressure on all the corners and I clamp them diagonally. All the corners end up like this one. When the glue on the frame is dry, I make two curves on each corner of the frame. I plane a scrap piece of wood to the thickness of the curve. I cut eight triangles. I put glue on the triangles and I insert them in each saw curve. While the glue is drying, I mark the spots for the screw holes of the four legs and I drill them. I put double stick tape on the legs and I stick them on the bottom of the cabinet. With my Dremel, I make pallet holes on the legs and I screw them. Now that the glue on the door's corners is dry, I can cut the splines. I send them flush with the frame. I plane the door with the hinges so it will close without catching. I drill holes on the door and inside the cabinet for the hinges screws. I punch a hole for the door handle and I drill it. I sand all the sharp corners of all the drawers and the cabinet as well. I vacuum all the dust that I can. Then I blow compressed air to remove the rest. I clean everything with mineral spirits. I'm spraying my father's industrial lacquer. The last time I used it, after a week or so, I had white dust on the sprayed furniture. I don't know why, but I have three theories. One, at 20 years old, the lacquer may be too old. Two, since I sprayed it outside, humidity may have made that white powder. My final theory, my mix of one part lacquer and one part thinner, 
was too thick. This time, I mix one part lacquer with two parts thinner, and I spray inside. Only the future will tell if my lacquer is too old. Then, I insert the leg levelers. I put the door slides back. I drill all the doors in front to fit a handle. I screw the door. I install the false front of the two big drawers with their handles. I drill some holes for the power cord and the dust port. I glue the T for the dust port and I cut the inside of the cabinet. Before fixing my old tabletop, I need to enlarge the top hole. I mark the hole and I drill two holes wider than the marks. I cut this hole with a router and an answer. Finally, I can screw the router tabletop. Here's my new router table cabinet. I just need to fill the drawers with rubber bits and other stuff. Thank you for watching and see you next time for another episode of The Woodpecker. <laughs>